Hello, everyone. Thanks for being here for this webinar. We're going to give our registrants a few minutes to get themselves into the session before we get started. I see a number of people who are here. So Start at two minutes after the hour. This is going to mean nothing to you if you're watching this on Facebook. Shout out to all of you who are watching this on Facebook, not with this live. All right, I'm going to ask my, my team, how's my audio? Let me know in the uh, private chat here. I got one message that it might not uh, be great. Drop me a note in there if uh, there's an issue there. Okay, good. Seeing that the, the audio is okay now. So we're going to get started. Thanks for being with me for this webinar How to Uncover Your Capitalist Story to Attract and Retain Talent An Introduction to Business Leaders. I'm Paul Fariga, President and Chief Storyteller at WordRight. And certainly we'll talk more about WordRight before we end our time together. But let's get into the meat of our subject today, shall we? Today's webinar is all about storytelling, a particular flavor of storytelling, storytelling to attract and retain talent. I like to start with these four words. Pretty much every talk I give has those words in there somewhere. Once upon a time, why is that? Because we know that storytelling, the original form of human communication between two people, no batteries required, only a brain and an imagination is driven by this concept. Myself, my earliest memories as a child of time with my parents revolve around storytelling. And so many of those stories began with Once Upon a Time. The fact that I remember those experiences and that many others that I've spoken with over the years have the same experience proves a scientifically validated point. And that is, stories work because we remember them. They stick with us. Bullets, features, benefits, they can fly past us, especially in the digital age, but stories stick. That's particularly important given our topic for this webinar. Once upon a time, the world of work was in turmoil, and it absolutely is. This word cloud here gives you a sense of all the things that are going on in the market for great talent. Not only the talent that you already have on board, but the talent that you are trying to attract to your organization. What are you going to do? If you're an employer, there's been a lot of research done, and I, I love this study. McKinsey's been on the forefront of taking a look at this, and one of the top international consulting organization. They did a survey in 2021 that they're in the process of repeating. Why do employers think employees are leaving? Certainly, whether it's at work or in a social setting, the topic that comes up in most of my conversations is, well, better pay, good life balance, better physical and emotional health. All of those things are true. But guess what? The research shows it doesn't matter as much to the employee, to the talent, as it seems to to the employer. The employer is going to live it off date. What are the employees doing for that? This just blows my mind. The top three reasons for people quitting during this time of, 
or the great resignation or the great retention and, and people are talking about things like why quitting, et cetera, et cetera. Number one, they don't feel valued by their organization. Number two, they don't feel valued by their managers. Number three, they don't feel a sense of belonging. Wow. This pay important. Of course it is. Pay is important no matter what's going on in the world. Same with benefits. Same with the work environment, right? Look at the top reasons in one of the most challenging times for talent in the history of global society. And these are the top reasons that great talent are given for making a move. By the way, that is a hot link there. You're going to be able to get all of the slides in today's presentation. So if you don't feel like writing everything down, you don't have to. That's a hot link there. It'll take you right to the actual study. So we've got that throughout today's session. Now, you're in the right webinar. If you're having trouble hiring and retaining people, I honestly have not come across an organization that is satisfied <laughs> with its situation uh, in terms of the, the talent attraction and retention. So, you know, hopefully you're doing okay, but it would not be unusual if you are not, right? Secondly, those you're trying to retain and those you're trying to attract don't really see much difference between you and your competitors other than salary and pay. And again, that is the thing that employers are considering or thinking about maybe more than they should be, right? And maybe you're messaging about the value of working in your organization internally for current employees and externally for the talent you hope to attract is inconsistent. Now, what, what's the disconnect here, right? Why is this happening? Why is it that employers have one idea that's sort of kind of right, but not really right, and talent has a different idea? Well, guess what? Simon Sinek is a wellspring for us at WordWrite in terms of our work with stories and storytelling for our clients. He's got a book that came out a couple of years ago called The Infinite Game. I'm going to talk about it a couple of times during this webinar. This is from a speech he gave that is on the subject of the infinite game. Finnick has this concept that he calls a just cause company. You're not just in business to pay the bills or make the most profit that you possibly can, or maybe you know take advantage of your customers or employees are you offering people something to be a part of something bigger than themselves something that's worth a sacrifice you have to have a just talk again there's a link there to that talk if you want to look at that later so what the heck is a just cause well you know there's a number of places on the internet where people will review books and I thought Daria's description, which again, that top link you can read her whole synopsis of the book, was really great. What is a just cause? It's a specific vision of an ideal state in the future. It's a clear picture that everybody in the organization can see. And you just saying we're going to improve the world is not enough. It's got to be more specific. By the way, that's a, the, the copy of the book right there on the picture, taken right from I uh, think the website, which we will also link to later if you're curious to read that book. Cynic has defined five elements of what he calls a just cause. It's got to be optimistic and hopeful. Now think about that. In today's hiring environment, isn't everybody looking for something optimistic and hopeful? But its point is really that's always been. It's got to be ide idealistic. In the speech clip on the previous page, uh, slide, 
you know, he says, people don't join a company just so you can extend the value of your brand. That is not something that drives people to join an organization. It's got to be bigger than that, inspiring, bold, ultimately unachievable. Just think about it. If it was a goal that could be achieved, once you achieve that goal, then what's the purpose of the organization? An example that I give, because we're based in Pittsburgh, there's a company here called Industrial Scientific. When you walk into the lobby of the Industrial Scientific headquarters, there's this huge banner in the ceiling, and it says, our goal, eliminate all workplace injuries by 2050. Well, number one, Industrial Scientific is not in charge of the entire world's workforce. They don't have the ability to eliminate all workplace injuries. But that's a specific, unachievable goal. By 2050, this is our goal. Eliminate all workplace injuries. So that's a great example of that. Now, it's inclusive. You join that company as an example, you're joining the team that's on a mission to eliminate workplace injuries. It's resilient. No matter what happens, it's still a good goal. Technologically, culturally, politically, et cetera. And it's service oriented. It's not about putting as much money in the pockets of the company owners and that alone. It's aimed to benefit others. Well, guess what, folks? How do you encapsulate a just cause to attract and retain talent? Simple. Share a great story. Share your capital S story, which we're going to define in a second here. When you're trying to attract and when you want to retain talent, everything we just looked at can be summarized in a great narrative that describes why your organization exists. At WordWrite, we call this your capital S story. And I've written a book on the topic called Finding Your Capital S Story, Why Your Story Drives Your Brand. We say at our firm, this is the one story that rises above all the others that an organization or business leader share. Because it answers four fundamental questions. Why would somebody buy from you, work for you, invest in you, or partner with you? The answers to those questions define the very character and nature of your organization. They should stand the test of time. They should be good today and they should be good tomorrow. Now, critically important for the topic of this webinar, a great capital S story is like a diamond. And what do we know about a diamond beyond the fact that it's considered a precious jewel in, in Western culture? Physically, it has many facets. If you look at the picture there, right? The same diamond has different facets. Your capital S story has different facets too. And the facet or the aspect of the story that's attractive to talent is not the same one that's gonna get you customers. It's not the same one that's gonna get you investors. It's not the same one that's gonna find partner organizations to work with yours. It's the same overall Story, but the aspect of it that's important to talent is different. And that's critically important. Far too often what we see at our firm is companies will wander into the talent space trying to attract great talent with marketing messages. That doesn't work. Now, yes, there are companies, Apple, Nike, some others, where people do, as one element, join the company because they like the products, or they like the service. But that doesn't describe the totality of their interest in working there. They care about a lot of other things. So you can't just rely on messaging that's ideally directed to another audience when you're trying to attract and retain talent. Here are some common examples of capital S stories. How the company was created, the dream or the vision or the passion that drives it, What's the innovation that the organization has brought to the world? Maybe the world is finally ready for what your organization does, product or service. It's a coming of age. Or, or maybe it was an epiphany, something that
that changed everything that you didn't expect. Those are five examples of capital S stories. They are not the only kinds of capital S stories that are out there wild in the world. But to help you understand this concept, there's five to get you started. Your organization may be representative of one of these five stories, or maybe it has another capital S story. The important thing to understand is your organization has a capital S story. And if you really want to attract and retain talent, need to uncover it, develop it, and then share it so that talent understands why they need to be working for you. Now, just as a quick refresher, we gave five examples of capital S stories. Let's match those again to Cynic's elements of a just cause. Is your story, if you know it, optimistic and hopeful? Is it idealistic? Are you giving your current employees and your future talent the opportunity to join a cause? Is it inclusive? The world of remote work is not going to go away. Hybrid, in person, fully remote, every organization is going to be different. How are you going to get people to join the cause? You've got to be inclusive. And if there's anything about the last two or three years, that demonstrates to us that we're gonna to have to be able to be nimble and to make adjustments, your story needs to be resilient. It can't be attached to a certain kind of technology or for that matter, to a certain kind of work style, remote or not, right? And it's gotta be bigger than just the specific needs of the organization or its employees. Look how many people have made not just job changes, but career changes driven by their own personal epiphanies about the meaning of their work and their contributions to the world at large. Service oriented. Now, frequently, when I present on this topic, the capitalist story, people will say to me, okay, if I know my story, where does it go? So let's get tactical and literal. Number one, if you're trying to attract a talent, what's the first place they're going to go in the digital era? Your website. Is your story on your homepage? It needs to be. What's the second place talent's going to go? I don't know anything about this company. I'm going to go to the about page. Is there a narrative there on your website? Does it convey the reason why your organization exists? and why any audience, including employees, would want to be part of your story. And then obviously, your story has to be part of your talent communications. Whether you're recruiting on Indeed or LinkedIn or the careers page on your site, however you are looking to attract talent and certainly retain talent, you need to have your story driving that messaging. Give people something to join the just cause that we talked about. In addition to giving you examples of where your capitalist story should appear for talent attraction and retention reasons, let's take a look at a few companies that really do a good job. When you talk about great places to work, you can't avoid Patagonia. Recently, of course, they were in the news because the founder of the company has decided that he is going to put the company in a nonprofit trust so that the values of the organization exist and continue to thrive beyond him. This is from the Patagonia uh, YouTube channel. They have an entire uh, section, six videos, which are really great, called Family Business. And they talk about what they've been doing for families since 1983. That's when the first on site child care center opened at Patagonia. Really great videos. Again, there's the link. You can take a look at it. Now, what I love about these videos is Patagonia obviously has a story. They're a top ranked place to work for a reason. All of these videos are first person videos. Did the company produce them? Yes. Uh, were they paid for by the company? Yes. But beyond that, it's Patagonia employees talking about how much they love 
working at the company because of the work-life balance. Check it out later. Number two, the remote company. Now the remote company, it sounds like something that was invented uh, during COVID, but actually it wasn't. It's a technology company. A lot of their employees are remote. They have a few uh, platforms. One of them is called Mailer Light, and it's basically a, a, an email newsletter uh, app. And what they started to do uh, as part of their hiring process, I think this is really an interesting idea. In addition to whatever else the talent would provide if they want to work at the remote company, they ask them to do their own newsletter using their own software. When you get the slides, you can take a look at some of the descriptions here of what they're looking for. Now, why do they do this? Think about that concept of a just cause. If you're going to join a company where one of their products is this platform, how cool is it to ask people who are really interested in working there to give that software a try? And along the way, to tell their own story about why they should work for the organization. I think it's really a smart move. Now, speaking about remote, Buffer, which is a social media management technology company, is well known for being remote long before the pandemic. Something that they've been doing since before the pandemic that I think is really fascinating, that is a part of their story, they do an annual state of remote work report. Now, they started doing this before the pandemic. They're doing it now. They're in there. If you want to know what it's like to be a remote employee at Buffer, the good, the bad, the warts and all, it's in the State of Remote Work Report, along with a lot of other really useful information. How great is it that this company believes in the concept of remote work deeply enough as part of their story that they're willing to be fully transparent about what's happening within their own organization as regards an important reason for their being, the ability to be a fully remote employee. I just love that. I think that's really great. All right, let's shift gears a little bit before we get to questions in a few minutes. Let's talk about how you can uncover your own organization's capital S story to attract and retain talent. I've got three ideas for you on how to do that. Number one, ask your employees. And here are some idea starter questions. Every organization has talent inside of that organization who can be considered evangelists for working there. Here's some great questions to ask those folks so that you can turn that around to help construct that facet of your capital S story that attracts and retains talent. What was it like on your first day? How did you know before you got here this was the right place to work? What inspires you to do what you do on a daily basis? What is it about working here that's meaningful to you? Remember, just cause, something bigger than the individual, tangible, sort of uh, personal, selfish considerations. And why do you keep coming back? Like, why do you stay, basically, right? But take a look at the company, too. Probe your own history. If your founders are still with the organization, why did they start the company? People love origin stories. So much of successful pop culture is built around uncovering and sharing the origin story of great people and great organizations. What was the tension, the risk, the conflict that caused the founders to form the company? If you think about classic storytelling, of the kind that we might see in films or in literature, there's this point in the story early on where there's some sort of a conflict, right? A challenge. The hero or heroes need to do something to make life different. That's usually part of the origin story or part of the story of a company. In marketing, we call this differentiation. What does your organization do that no other organization does? There ought to be some one thing, ideally more than one, that you can share with current and future talent that describes how you're different than everybody else. How about your first success? 
It's, it's kind of a, a trope in popular culture. You know, you go into your corner dry cleaners or whatever, they have a little frame on the wall behind the counter, the first dollar they ever made. Sometimes those first real success stories can be really attractive to, to current employees and future employees. And this is critically important given the world we live in today. How has the company changed since it started? Unless you're a brand new startup or you've been lucky enough never to have to change anything about your business, you have this material. And the people you want to attract to your organization, the people you want to keep in your organization, this is part of what's going to motivate them. They need to know that part of your story. Critically important, share the passion. What are the values that drive what your folks do every day? What is it that an individual worker in your organization brings every day that no one else does? In other words, what is their part of the story that feeds into the overall story? How about what's an employee's favorite story about the culture of the organization? There's no better way to share the capitalist story than by having somebody in your organization give an example of what it's like to work there. What does the company or does an individual do to make a lasting and positive difference? And how about sharing a story about that? So there's three ideas for you there. Ask your employees, dig into the company history, the company itself, dig into what it is you do, share that passion. Now, Trey, at this point, you can share this handout in the uh, chat pane. We have our own take on how we do this when we begin a story crafting exercise. And by the way, story crafting is WordWrite's trademarked process to help our clients uncover, develop, and then share their capitalist story. We almost always begin with a leadership meeting in which we use a variation on this handout that you now have available to you in the chat pane, where we have the leadership team individually write down their answers to the questions of why somebody would buy from the organization, work for it, invest in it, or partner with it. Take that back to your organization. Sit down with the people who are responsible for your organization's story. What you're gonna find out not everybody tells exactly the same story, which gives you some opportunity to work on things, some raw material. You're going to pick up from your colleagues great ideas that you might want to factor into how you're sharing the company's or organization's story. It's going to stir the imagination. When we do this with a client, where we wind up in our phase one of story crafting is we get everybody on the same page. They're sharing the same story in their own way to the audiences that they most need to attract. So obviously, a vice president of sales cares more about customers and future customers. The head of HR is concerned with talent, right? So you're gonna have different audiences, but you're gonna be sharing that same story. And this is a first step in that process. Now, to shift gears briefly, while well, you're probably taking a look at that, why do we care so much about this? And what is it exactly that we do? Why are we putting on this webinar? Yes, we are obviously so passionate about the concept of the capitalist story that we are looking to help more organizations improve and share their capitalist story, but why? Well, first of all, we wrote the book on the topic, as I referenced, and there'll be more about that in a couple of minutes. As I also mentioned, we developed a trademark process. We care so much about helping organizations uncover develop and share their capitalist story. We put together an entire process to do it so that we can do it for as many organizations as possible so that they have success in terms of today's webinar topic in attracting and retaining talent, but also in terms of prospects and customers and investors if that's important or partners. WordWrite's been in business for 20 years. We worked with many companies over the years to deliver this kind of success. At our core, what we are, is a team of great storytellers. There are several of us on the team, in fact, who are former journalists. Myself, personally, uh, not to boast, but I think it makes the, the case 
over a 20 year career in journalism. I figured it out one time because I started back enough when there wasn't an internet. <laughs> and I literally gave you paper copies of your stories after they were published. I wrote 10,000 stories and edited another 10,000 stories. What does that mean? That means that I was with people in the best of times and the worst of times for beginnings, middles, and ends. You learn a heck of a lot about the power of great stories by being with people that many times in those kinds of situations. Now, you'll also see that Trey has put into the chat pane uh, the employee story questions worksheet, which can help you uh, through this process. And Trey, thanks for doing that. I appreciate it. As I mentioned a moment ago, story crafting is our trademark process. This is just a description of what we do. There's four main reasons why organizations hire us. They're having trouble uh, articulating their value to their target audiences. They're unsure of their ROI and, and sharing their story. Maybe they're targeting a new market. And to the direct point of this specific webinar, they're uncertain on how to attract and retain talent. Now we're just about ready to take some questions. So while you're thinking about those, here are three things that I hope you take from this webinar that are helpful to you in your organization. Number one, what is your capital S story? And number two, is that story driving your talent attraction and retention? And the big question, why or why not? You have a story, is it driving your talent attraction and retention? If it is, great. Uh, maybe it could be better. Maybe you're very happy with it. Kudos to you. Maybe you think it doesn't matter at all. Or maybe you're thinking to yourself, why aren't we sharing that story when we're recruiting and we're working to retain our talent? Now, if you're not sure of the answers, I'm happy to connect by phone or video and talk it through. I'm happy to spend half an hour with you and just uncover with you, I do this all the time, uh, to chat with folks about the essence of their story. If we do that, <laughs> you'll have access to a lot of additional resources to help uncover your story. I'm happy to send, share, et cetera. I mean, we've been doing this for 20 years. This is a passion for us. It's impossible in an hour long block of time, presenting for about 30 or 35 minutes, to cover everything that we know of value that could help you and your organization with attracting and retaining talent by uncovering, developing, and sharing your capital S story. All right, we're ready for questions now. And you can see there on, on this slide, and uh, you know, we use the uh, Demio webinar platform. You will be getting a follow-up email with links to everything, including a PDF copy of the slides, um, a link to this uh, page where you can download additional copies of what's been shared in the chat pane. Uh, especially important if you're viewing this on a replay and you're not with us live, and you'll also have access to a lot of other resources. You can see there um, the three bullets above the downloads page. So at that point, we are ready to take some questions. Okay, so here's a question. In addition to displaying your, your capitalist story on your site and communicating to the team and clients, what are some other methods and platforms for sharing your just cause and, and story with the world? So in, in the recruiting space, uh, for sure, there are, are lots of channels uh, to attract talent. Um, larger organizations that we've worked with, they may have uh, a search firm on, on retainer or one that they use when they have a project, those people need to know your story. Trust me, uh, the, the search firms that we've worked with, they are tired of just getting from their clients a four page job description uh, that re reads like a sleep aid. Okay, those things are necessary in HR, but at the very top of the talent attraction and retention funnel, that is not gonna move the needle. That is not going to get people interested, especially today. You know, the statistics I'm reading, there's something like 11 million job openings in the United States right now, and there's only half as many people who are actively looking for work. Think about that. In other words, there's twice as many job opportunities 
as there are people who are actually looking to fill them. You need to share that story and you need to share it with everybody who's out there advocating it for you. Certainly in a more classic marketing sense, directed to talent, but marketing nonetheless, uh, your social media platforms, uh, your written materials, when you're attending events, people need to be able to share a little story, uh, you know, job fairs or other environments where you might be uh, attracting people. And some of the best talent comes into organizations for one-on-one -on -one personal networking conversations. That needs to be part of what your folks who are doing the talent networking are sharing on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Great question. Thank you for that. Other questions? How can I ensure that the perspectives of employees at all levels in my company are reflected in our just cause and story? Well, that's, that is another great question. The concept of just cause is inclusive. Now, as a practical matter, whether or not you're running an organization, maybe you're miles away from running your organization, but certainly I think as human beings, we all understand you can't have a million cooks in the kitchen at once. So it's both a leadership function to set the process to uncover and develop and share the story, but it is an inclusive process to bring everybody into the fold. Think about some of those employee and other questions that I shared earlier in the webinar. Those are directed at individual employees and it can be individual employees at any level of the organization. You know, it, it, it's such an old story, but I think it fits with what we're trying to suggest here. You know, the story goes that back in the Middle Ages, a man was walking along the street and he saw that a lar very large building was being constructed. And he asked the, the first person uh, what he was doing. And he said, uh, I'm laying bricks, okay? And he walked a little bit further down the street and asked the second person, what are you doing? And he said, I'm building a wall. And he walked a little bit further down the street and he asked the third person, what are you doing? And that person said, I'm building a cathedral. So think about that. How connected are the individual stories of your employees to the overall mission and story of the organization? One of my favorite examples of this is, um, and I'm not remembering the name of the company right now, it's a concrete company in Florida. They are one of the top uh, concrete companies for building outdoor environments like stadiums, right? And they're having a tremendous time recruiting employees to the organization. It's a concrete company. Either you like to make concrete and put it down or you don't. And then they realized that what they were doing was they were building places where people gather to have some of the best times of their lives. And guess what happened, folks? Their recruitment took a turn for the better because I can lay concrete for some nameless unknown stretch of highway or I can work for a company that's building the places where people get to spend some of the best times of our lives. Where do I want to work? What's the better story? All right, any more questions? If there aren't any, that's fine. Everybody who's here with us live and everybody who's watching on a replay, you're gonna get an email with additional information. As I said earlier, I'm very happy to chat with folks offline afterwards about any aspect of what we've covered in the webinar. I wanna say thank you to everybody for being here with us, whether you watched live or on replay, and I look forward to being in touch with you in the future. Thank you so much for giving us the gift of your time to learn more about how to use your capitalist story to attract and retain talent. And I hope to see you soon in another one of our webinars or in person. Stay tuned, our next webinar is gonna be focused on 
the C-suite perspective on the importance of having a capital S story. That will broadcast live at noon Eastern time on December the 7th. Again, we'll be sending out more communications about that. And if you're on our list, you'll be receiving it. Thanks again, folks, for your time. Really appreciate it. Hope to see many of you soon.